So there's this website called Color Cooler where you type in a screen name and it gives you what they call your Instagram palette, not a sponsor. So I thought it would be really fun if I created an illustration using my Instagram color palette. But first, really quick, let's go over my Instagram color palette. So as you can see, overall, I am rosy brown, which is really funny because you guys know how much I love my earthy tones. As you can already see, we've got some lovely earthy colors here. Starting off at the top left, we do have a lovely poop green, which is very on brand for me. Moving on to a nice cool gray, which I can definitely appreciate. Our lightest color perhaps is this, I don't know, sandy eggshell white color. Moving on, thankfully getting into some more colorful colors. We do have a light pink, a more yellowishy brown color, and this lovely maroony dark reddish purpley color, which is really nice because a lot of these colors are either very light or mid-toned, so it's good to have this really dark color that we can use and love it. We have this super bright green. I absolutely love that and that is definitely going to help add a pop of color to our illustration and unfortunately uh, we end with two very similar brown colors, so that's a little unfortunate, but maybe we can add them in a way that will be useful. That's what we're gonna go with. So let's get some ideas, some sketches, and brainstorm what we can create from this color palette. Should be fun. Obviously because I had a very earthy color palette with a lot of browns and some greens and just a little bit of warm reds, I was really feeling something quite literally earthy. I knew there was going to be a lot of dirt in this illustration and I knew that I wanted to have some sort of plant or growth or some sort of magic or something growing to be maybe the main point or whatever in this illustration brought just a little bit of a pop of color. So when I started to sketch a character, I immediately started to think of some sort of humanoid animal mouse creature. Maybe she was doing some magic to make some plants grow. And once I had this main character sketched out, I was really inspired to have her in this field of dirt where maybe things were trying to grow, but they weren't able to grow, resulting in a very brown image and just having a few pieces of blades of grass here in there popping up throughout the image and creating some nice green pops of color which ended up being a really nice color combination because red and green are complementary colors so after i had our sketch of our little mousy magical girl in this field of dirt with some plants and rocks and bug friends obviously there was no need to sketch any more ideas because i was in love with her and i really like these little bug guys and i was was ready to start testing out some colors. So because we only had nine colors, I did need to do some color mock-ups just to make sure that I knew what I was getting into and there was a lot of planning to be done because half of the colors were a lighter brown color and I just really wasn't sure how I was going to go around those four very similar browns. So what I started off with was the sky. I was really excited about the sky because we had that really dark maroon color which I was going to use for the line art and I also thought it would be really interesting to have a sunset fading from that really dark maroon color to the pink to white. Instead of trying to incorporate each color into each part of the illustration, I thought it would make for a very interesting composition to, I guess, sort of focus a certain color on each area. So obviously the sky was going to be our pink red color. And there was a few ways to go about this. I could either make it pink and white and make it very light, or I could have it fade from dark to light or fade light to dark. I didn't like the way the white to dark from top to bottom was looking, mainly because I wanted to have some white clouds in the sky and I really liked the way that the white clouds popped in that maroon sky. So that was the one I ended up going with. So once I had the colors mocked up, I was ready to move on to working on the finished piece. As you 
guys know, I usually work with watercolors. They are the medium I am the most comfortable with, but when it comes to challenges where you have a certain set of colors, I just find it easier to work digitally because you are able to grab those exact colors and work with them. When it comes to watercolor, it's just way too easy to add too much water or too much pigment and you come up with much different colors than what you are shooting for. And because I had so many browns that were just way too similar, I didn't trust myself to be able to mix those colors well. So going into this, I knew right away I was going to go digital, which feels so strange to me because I'm not super used to doing digital illustrations anymore. And just in general, I just like the way watercolor illustrations look. So this was a little bit different for me, but I really did enjoy the process of making this piece. And I really like to play with the different textures I can get in Procreate. At first, when I started this piece, I really wasn't even sure if I was going to use line art for this illustration style. When it comes to illustrations that are so focused on color, I think it's really interesting to work without line art. That way you kind of pay more attention to colors and how they interact with each other. But I was kind of excited to play around with this really dark maroon line art. I'm always telling myself that I want to use line art that is different colors. But when it comes to digital art, you can make any color your line art. So I was really excited to use this really dark maroon as the line art. And because we were so limited to our really dark colors in this piece, I wanted to use a lot of dark shadows throughout the character and on the objects like around the stones. For whatever reason, I decided to go in this weird whimsical style of the stones coming out of holes in the ground. I don't know. In general, I tried to use a lot of darker shadows so that I could use that dark color because I was just so scared that there was going to be a lack of contrast in this illustration. And I also made all of our little bug creatures that dark maroon color. At first I was thinking about making them gray, but in the end I think it brings a lot of dark tone to this illustration, which I think it really needed. And as you guys know, for whatever reason, little black figure animals seem to be something that I include in my drawings a lot. They're just so cute. Look at all these little bug guys. I love them. There isn't too much of a story behind this illustration, but I do think it's really interesting that we have this little mousy sprite girl who is wandering through this dead dirt area and she finds this plant that was growing, but I used one of the browns to suggest that the plant is dying. So that is why she is holding it in her hands and looking at it a lot more worried than the original sketch. She had a little bit of an angry face for some reason in the original sketch, but I thought for story's sake, if she was looking at this plant concerned, it would make a lot more of an interesting narrative. I also matched her eyes to be green just to suggest that she is some sort of plant loving creature. But I also did play around with her fur being green, which I will show you guys later. I just, I could not decide on what colors to make her. It was quite a struggle. In the end, I did decide to go with a more natural look for her. So I did go with her a lot more brown, but I had to make her, I guess, fleshy parts more white so that she popped off of all of those darker toned areas. And still the brown kind of makes her blend into the background a little too much for me, which is why I made this alternative version of her. She's white and green, but I will show you guys again. I'll show you that at the end. The only other thing I seem to struggle with with this illustration was, again, brown related because the tones were just so similar and I wanted to make the ground brown and I wanted to add shadows or texture or something but the colors were just clashing and they weren't different enough from each other to create the two different colors of the mounds of dirt and that was something I had to keep playing around with and adding texture and making gradients and seeing what was working and what wasn't working. And in the end, I feel like I just kind of settled, but I guess it looks all right. It, it, it could have, it could have came out worse. The final touches to this illustration is just adding a bunch of little grains and dots and bits and bobs to the ground and her fur just to add texture and more visual interest. And I, I'm actually pretty happy with how this turned out. It's got a narrative. I really love those earthy colors. Thank you, Instagram. You know me too well. 
And I think it was really fun to challenge myself to create an illustration based off of this palette that maybe didn't work super well together, but I think it was a lot of fun and it turned out pretty good. So there is our earthy field. As promised, here is our alternate coloring of our mouse creature. She has white fur and green hair, which is a lot more colorful and more bright than the brown version, so let me know in the comments. Also, here's a poll, which do you prefer? And with that, I challenge you guys to go get your own Instagram palette and create an illustration using those nine colors. You never know what you'll come up with. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Stay golden. But hey, before I go, thank you so much to all of my patrons for being amazing. You guys' support seriously means so much to me. Do you want coloring pages, secret sketches, early access? Check out my Patreon by clicking the link in the description. Thank you guys all seriously so much. Bye. Mm -hmm.